Good day there guys, it's your main man Marky and welcome back to hanging out with Marky and the family. We got the dogs here, we're ready to go, ready for some r slash am I the a-hole content. Now if you love it, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, like and subscribe for the doggos, and get ready for another bloody amazing video. Thank you. Posted by user Lord of the, titled, Am I the a-hole for tipping a server only 15%? So my boyfriend and I were eating dinner at an upscale but casual restaurant the other day. For the record, we are not American, but are visiting for work. I do live in the US for a good part of the year, but mostly live in Canada slash the UK, where I grew up. In Canada, there's also tipping culture, but I tip the standard 15% and never had any trouble there, and in the US too, for that matter. We ate on the patio. Our waitress was nice and provided great service. Our total bill before tax came to be $85. We tipped $12, or 15%. We paid in cash. Just as we left, we heard the waitress complain about the tip to her co-worker. She said something along the lines of, carries a designer purse but still tips like crap? I was very shocked, and my boyfriend wanted to go back and confront her, but I told him it was not worth it. I did leave an anonymous review on Google about what happened. I spoke with some American colleagues who state that 15% is considered a good, but not great tip, especially in nicer restaurants, generally given if the service was just mediocre. I've only given more than 15% tip in America if the service was truly awesome, and I haven't gotten any bad feedback before this incident. So. I'm fortunate enough to live in Australia where tipping isn't required in the hospitality industry for you to actually make a living wage. Unfortunately, you Americans have it pretty rough, and obviously my opinion is biased, like absolutely. To me, blaming the consumer for not subsidizing your wages is the same as blaming someone for having a bigger carbon footprint when it's the bastards above us that are causing all the damage. The employers in these restaurants should be giving you a minimum livable wage. Sure, you get a subpar tip, but that's not really OP's fault now, is it? Yeah, the system you have set up, like, shames and blames OP, and it's like, you're a terrible person, you didn't shell out a 25% tip on your meal, you asshole. But no, that's just such a dumb system. I'm going no a-holes here for OP and the server. It just really sucks to be living under a system like that, and blaming OP for not shelling out that money isn't the answer to this one. Now in the comments, Trillium Summer says, 15% isn't a bad tip, but $12 is actually 14%, but it's no longer a great tip, and you said you got great service. In much of America, the hourly tipped wage hasn't increased in over a decade and is under $3 an hour. So it kind of makes sense that the tip percent has increased over time. Would you want to still make the same you were making a decade ago? The only reason why I'm going with the soft you're the a-hole hesitantly is a combo of one, you said you got great service and 14% isn't a great service tip, and two, the restaurant industry has been hit hard and it's still not recovered yet. So because I'm in a good enough position that I can still afford to weed out, I've been giving 20% normal, unless it's bad service. Otherwise, I'd probably say no, you're not an a-hole for giving 14% tip. I'm leaning towards everyone sucks here because I agree that OP under-tipped. It seems petty to not just round up to 100 on an $85 bill. But at the same time, the server shouldn't have complained where the guests could hear. Yeah, that's maybe where I should have landed. I was just a bit pertubed where they were like, it was great, which is why I left 15%, which actually wasn't 15%, which is pretty universally only a good tip. Add in pandemic and I landed there. So I think the waitress should be allowed to complain to a coworker. It's not like she said that to you. 15% is a low tip in the US, and anyone who pretends it's not is just cheap. 15% would actually be $12.75, so you rounded down and tipped below 15. Plus, you did your calculations before taxes, so you're the a-hole. 
Yes, they should just be paid a real wage instead of having customers do the dance, but that's not the reality we currently live in. It's a pandemic. Doesn't hurt to just err on the side of being nice. Complain to a coworker in hearing distance from a customer? It should not be okay. Exactly. The shocking responses on this thread are ridiculous. I worked in retail where I was not tipped, and I would be severely reprimanded if a customer overheard me crap-talking them. Totally unprofessional, and the people saying you're the a-hole need a reality check. Posted by user Robalobba, titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my dad he's a better husband than father? My dad has been married to his wife Michelle since I was 10. Before that, it was just him and me, 17 male, after my mum died when I was 6. Michelle was very enthusiastic straight away. She told me she would be a great mum to me and said she was so excited to have a son. After they got married, she asked if she could adopt me and I said no. My dad asked why and I said because I didn't want to be adopted? They told me it could be really convenient if I was adopted and that it would mean a lot to Michelle. They dropped it after about four months, only to bring it up a year later. I said no again and told them I would never ever want Michelle to adopt me, that I did not want her to be my mom and nothing would change how I felt. I'm guessing Michelle can't have kids of her own since they started down the adoption route. They went through a lot of the interviews and studies and I was talked to. They met with the agency, met with the birth mother three times, and each time it fell through. The last time was at the beginning of the year. Michelle was broken and ended up in therapy after it, and they decided to stop trying to adopt. It was two weeks ago that Michelle sat me down and told me she loved me and had always hoped to be a mother to me, but I said no, and that she tried to be a mother another way and was knocked back every time, and that she hoped after all these years, I would love her enough to give her that wish. It was her way of asking to adopt me again. She gave me all the reasons it would be good, and she really emphasized that it would mean a ton to her. I said no yet again. She was not happy about my decision. My dad called me out on it. He said I could do this one thing and make her so incredibly happy, and it would be a security net for me too, and that it was hurting her feelings being rejected so many times by me. He told me I was being selfish and childish and not opening my heart the way I should. I told him he was a better husband to her than he was a father to me. That her feelings matter more than mine to him and I hoped he would be happy with her without me in their lives in a few months because I'm tired of being pressured into something I have said no to multiple times. Counting the prolonged time at the start when they really tried to talk me into it. He said I was acting like a seven-year-old and that accusing him of being a bad father and threatening him with estrangement was a low blow and very petty. Am I the a-hole? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I know what I said was kind of reactionary, but I meant every word I said, meaning it could make me the a-hole, so could saying something reactionary to him. It seems like she really jumped the gun from just coming into your life through your father straight to wanting you to be adopted by her. Doesn't seem like there was much time for you to get to know her, create a bond with her, and for her to really earn the chance to adopt you if that ever were to be a possibility. I feel like part of this is your father's fault for enabling her and not recognizing that it's creepy and ridiculous for you to be the target of her need to be a mother for such a long and drawn out time. I would feel so uncomfortable being guilt tripped into being adopted by someone I barely know and is now attacking me for not making them happy? What? Like, what the hell kind of logic is that? That just makes me want to get the hell away from them right this second, not, oh my god, you guys make such a convincing argument, where's the pen and paper? I don't know you lady, but I'm ready for another mama, let's go. This is just too weird for me, and absolutely not the a-hole OP. Now in the comments, all the cacti find a home says, not the a-hole. And if she wants to be your mum so bad, she should have started by respecting your feelings. 
this, she's not making a great case for herself. Plus, she could try to act motherly to OP without putting it on paper. There's a lot more to being a mum than adoption. Absolutely. My parents are divorced and remarried. I consider my stepmom to be another mum because of how she treated me, and my stepdad is just my mum's husband. It's about the relationship, not the paperwork, not the a-hole. Be clear that it isn't a threat. It is a consequence of him ignoring your boundaries for the past seven years. Children are not obliged to serve as emotional props for the adults in their lives. OP's father and stepmother have consistently ignored this one rather simple principle, which might have something to do with why adoption agencies rejected them too. Rather than own up to their own mistakes and learn better, the father is now trying to scapegoat OP. Not a word of that rant about being childish is worth taking seriously. Dad's outburst may have something to do with anxiety about his marriage. Shortly after the last child grows up and leaves home is a frequent time for divorce. Either way, OP, you are not the a-hole. You didn't create those people's problems, and it isn't your job to fix that. You nailed it. His wife has a weird parenting fetish. She doesn't actually want to be a mum, or she would just do the work and embrace the relationship that she's able to forge. She wants to be called mum, to announce herself as the mum at graduation, in the hospital, etc. And dad knows once OP leaves, he has only got whatever allure he himself brings to keep her around. OP, my dad, well, he was a crap father, and I said so to his casket, albeit through tears. He always excused his preference for his second wife over his only daughter by telling me she would still be there for him long after I was gone, claimed that I would understand when I had a family of my own. I'm here to tell you I do have a husband and adult child of my own, and my son is still my world. My dad was wrong, he did it wrong, and he died lonely. Go forth and live your most amazing life. If you find room for him in it, that's fine, but he made his choice and freed you to make yours. Our next post is by user CuteAwareness3670, titled, Am I the a-hole for enforcing my kids' friends to follow the same phone rules as our kids? My kids are 17, 14, and 8. The 8-year-old doesn't have a phone, but my two teens do. The rules are that they're not allowed to have their phone in the bedroom alone or bathroom during any time of the day, and at night, they bring us, me and their dad, their phones, and we lock them up. These rules are mostly because I know how vile the internet can be. I've had my younger siblings who grew up during the rise of the internet tell me horror stories, and as well, I very clearly remember the things I saw in Omegle as an adult. I really don't want to risk any of these issues with my kids. On top of that, it helps them not procrastinate homework or chores, and we spend a lot more family time together. The past week, my oldest child had a new friend come over. The girls were going to my daughter's room, and so I asked for their phones. My daughter looked embarrassed and handed over her phone. Her friend then asked what I meant. I told her of my rule, and she told me she wanted to keep her phone. I then told them that they could stay out in the living room. The girl got a little bit irritated, but they ended up staying out in the living room. The hangout then turned into a sleepover, and I called the kid's dad and talked to him about our rules. The dad was a little bit skeptic of our rules, as we get that often, but agreed. He told me he would relay this information to the mum as she was working. Nighttime came, and everyone gave me their phones except for my daughter's friend. She said that she felt more comfortable keeping her phone in case of an emergency. I told her if there was an emergency, she can come wake up me and my husband. She then told me she didn't really feel comfortable with that in case she wanted to text her mom to sleep. I told her that if that was the case that she needed to just go home, because in our house, the rule is no phones in the bedroom, period. She called her mom in another room, and I could hear her crying, and while I felt bad... I stood my ground. The mum had apparently just gotten off of work and not talked to dad, and thought our phone rule was creepy and invasive, and told me just that when she got to my house. 
She said that I should have just let her daughter keep her phone, and I told her that her daughter needed to follow my rules. My oldest is now embarrassed and really upset with me, and even my husband thinks I should have relaxed a little. I don't think I did anything wrong, but am I the a-hole for not letting the girl keep her phone? Edit, just to clarify, the girl knew before the sleepover that they turned in their phones before they went to bed, and she also knew her phone was included. She was not randomly blindsided. You may have control over your kids' phones with your weirdly draconian rules, but you do not have authority over guests' phones. That's a massive overreach and a bloody good way to alienate your daughter from her friends. It's just a really good way for them to never want to come back and spend time with your daughter. Those parents were well within their rights to question your house rules because I'm sure the vast majority of people would agree with them. You have no right to do that to other kids and are just doing more harm than good. Solid, you're the a-hole for this one. Now in the comments, Happy Froggy says, You're the a-hole. That 17 year old is going to resent you for being so goddamn strict, but yeah, you're not in charge of other kids' phones. This rule is a guaranteed way to ward off friends. The daughter's going to be known as that one girl with a crazy parent. I've been that girl with the crazy parents. You're honestly doing a lot of harm with your rules and your paranoia. Same. It didn't make me a better kid, it made me a better liar. You're the a-hole. Sheltering your kids will not teach them life skills. When they leave your house, they will find some of the unsavory parts of the internet and find themselves without any idea how to address them. While you still have the chance, guide them, not hide them. Also, having a phone nearby in case of an emergency is a legitimate excuse. If someone broke in, would you want your children crossing the hallway just to call 911? I can tell you that if my teen daughter went to a sleepover and they locked up her phone, those parents would seem more than just strict. They'd seem creepy. Shame on OP for assuming an emergency may not include feeling massively uncomfortable in her home. Posted by user, Am I the A-hole son Red Swack? Titled, Am I the A-hole for telling my niece that if she wants to come see my son, she either has to wear a head wrap or change the color of her hair? So my son, Nine, is autistic and has always hated the color red. It sets off his sensory disorder from a very young age and will send him into meltdowns. We have no idea why. It's kind of phenomenal. We've worked with his therapist, so now he can regulate his emotions a bit better and remove himself from situations. He will still end up having a meltdown. It's just a smaller one and easier to deal with. We've even looked into medication, but it doesn't seem like a viable option. My niece, 17, has recently dyed her hair bright, bright red. It honestly hurts my eyes to look at. My son is obviously not a huge fan, but I explained that it was okay, and he didn't have to look at it, which is what I'm supposed to do in all situations that include the color red. My niece is upset that I no longer bring him to family gatherings, usually leaving him with his dad or sending my husband with our other kids while I stay at home with him. She called me, upset, and asked why. I explained that it was her hair. She didn't seem to understand that it would upset him, and I said, look... You can either wear a head wrap or change the color. Until then, you aren't seeing him. She got further upset, and then my sister called, saying I shouldn't be telling her what to do with her body. I tried to explain that it's what needs to be done, but she wasn't listening. The situation is awful, but there isn't much else I can do. Am I the a-hole? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the a-hole. I think I'm the a-hole because it's obviously something she really loves about herself, and she doesn't want to have to hide it in order to see my son. Now in the comments, Beautiful Concern 144 says, In nine years of monitoring environments, banning family from wearing red, stripping red from his universe, and now removing him from family events because one family member has red hair, you never once thought about tinted goggles? And his therapist never mentioned it. Even though you got as far as tinted glasses and discovered the edges were an issue, it didn't follow from there? 
I'm not sure I buy it, to be honest. Anyway, judgment. If it's true, you're the a-hole for the way you approached it with your niece. Sounds like you just withdrew him, and then when she mentioned it, you demanded she change her hair instead of having a calm conversation with her. Or indeed, getting something like tinted goggles so your son can actually exist in the world. It's not possible to avoid a colour for the rest of his life. And edit to clarify, particularly in light of the abusive chats I'm getting sent, this comment was based on the fact the OP specifically said in another comment that she hadn't tried or even thought of goggles, and now it's been mentioned, she believes that they would help. Obviously, if they don't work for the little boy, or he can't wear them, that's another thing altogether. My comment was literally saying that in nine years, the option should have been considered and attempted. And OP replies, Honestly, I'm not sure why it didn't cross our minds. He didn't like the glasses due to other sensory issues, so I think we just kind of assumed they wouldn't work anyway. But at this point, goggles are the lesser of two evils. You're the a-hole. You went from explaining to your son, he doesn't have to look at it, which is what you said you're supposed to do in that situation, to telling your niece you won't bring him around her due to her hair. How is that even going to help or assist him in the situations where he will encounter the color red in his life? Avoidance? Either way, your delivery to your niece wasn't the kindest. And the bear will be fine, says, going with no a-holes here? Your niece is well within her rights to dye her hair whatever colour she wants, even bright red. It's understandable she misses her cousin and would want to see him. It's also understandable that if your son has such severe issues that red, which is everywhere, you'd want to minimise exposure. Is your niece already familiar with your son's sensory challenges? Have you taken the time to calmly explain it to her, and that instead of just saying, change the colour or you're not seeing him, you explained that while you know she loves her cousin, right now, for your immediate family's comfort and harmony, avoiding situations that triggers him is important. And right now, that happens to include her hair. That might go down a little better all around. And OP replies, She is fully aware. But I believe that she thought because she's very close with him, the colour wouldn't upset him. I'm not sure how the logic came about, but it did. She's young though, and most likely not thinking about this as clearly as you have to. Some kids, even older people, aren't as aware of others' feelings and their needs. It's not always an a-hole thing, but more of an aloofness. I'm not saying you're the a-hole for how you spoke to her about it. I feel it could have been nicer. Maybe the actual conversation was a more informative and less blunt than it seems here. If that's the case, then I'd change my ruling. Not the a-hole. There seems to be a lot of a-hole on this sub thinking therapy is some sort of magic potion that cures everything about autism. To be clear, I'm not being down on therapy, but yeah, it doesn't just make everything magically better. Exactly. Therapy can help you cope better, but it's not magic. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. Friendly reminder that I'm now posting daily on my second channel, Marky2. If you want to laugh at memes with me, link is down in the description below. On phone, you just click that little arrow underneath the video. I also want to say thank you to all my channel members and Patreon subscribers. Your names are currently floating down the screen here, and I love to see all of you guys. Thank you for joining me on this journey, thank you for supporting me, I really appreciate it. If you see yourself on screen, I want you to give yourself a big pat on the back for being amazing as always, and thank you for supporting me again. I do hope that you guys have a good day, night, sleep, whatever it is you're up to. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.